Now, Rangers extended their lead last night for a comfortable 4-2 win over Kilmarnock. But, as Martin Garza reports, the visitors did put up a fight. Just three minutes into this game and the unthinkable for most of the Ibrox crowd, Ray Montgomery heading home Billy Finlay's free kick. And Kilmarnock held that lead until the end of the first half. Montgomery had a part to play in this goal too. His stumble sent Bo Anderson clear. The Dane hasn't been happy lately, but no problems with that finish. Two minutes later and Rangers presented with a perfect opportunity to take a half-time lead. Paul Gascoigne's free kick handled in the box by Dylan Kerr. But Gaza's penalty, a fairly weak affair, well saved by Lekovic. Well, Walter Smith presumably didn't hold back with a half-time team talk and 15 minutes after the restart, David Robertson banged home this Brian Loudrup cross to put his side ahead. And Loudrup was involved again with the third. Stephen mishit the cross, but the ball fell nicely for Bo Anderson. Ten minutes later and the Dane made it a hat-trick. The cross from Alex Cleland. And if confidence has been Bo Anderson's problem in the past, it was in good supply last night. Alan McLaren, who made his comeback last night, was replaced by Petrich. And a couple of minutes from the end, Walter Smith might have regretted that decision. The substitute lost the ball to Mark Roberts, who pulled one back for Killy. But the game was well won. Hi there, welcome back to Wednesday's Football Show. Time now to take a look back at the key moments from last night's rangers Kilmarnock game at Ibrox, when amazingly, Ali McCoy didn't score. Rangers the winners 4-2 last night, but it was Kilmarnock who drew first blood. Billy Finlay's free kick and Ray Montgomery knocking the ball past Andy Gorham. Kilmarnock keeper Dragoji Likovic made the mistake which led to Rangers' equaliser. A bad kick out there picked up by Laudrup and he sends Bo Anderson through. Good finish, 1-1. The Rangers had the chance to go 2-1 ahead before half-time. This free kick handled in the box by Dylan Kerr. The referee awards a penalty. And Kerr's booked. Deliberate handball. Gascoigne with the penalty. Disappointing one, though. Keeper saves. Still 1-1. Into the second half, and Brian Loudrop, the architect of Rangers' second goal when it did come, he hits the byline after beating three defenders, and David Robertson in at the back post to put Rangers in front. Rangers went further ahead just after the hour mark. Loudrop again hitting the byline. The cross comes over. Trevor Stephen has a pop. And there's Bo Anderson to slide the ball past the despairing Likovic. 3-1 to Rangers. More to come. Alec Cleland making the run down the right on this occasion. Cross it comes. Cool as you like. Bo Anderson. 3-1. Great turn, great goal. Good hat-trick for the Dane. Still one goal to come in this game, but it was for Kilmarnock. Alex Cleland with the back heel, Gordon Petric in all sorts of trouble. And Mark Roberts says thank you very much indeed. 4-2 the final score, Bo Anderson the star. You have to look at a game on 90 minutes. Uh, I'll do some, some bad stuff on the pitch, but you have to see me as a goal scorer. And, and that, that's what I'm here for. I, my skills at the moment, because I don't have played regular and are not so good, but it will improve as long as I, I'm, I'm playing. So I'm, I'm confident about that. Kilmarnock, still in bottom. Where do you go from here? Oh, hopefully. I'm just going to lift my heads and go on with it. Saturday's another game for us against Aberdeen. Back down at Rugby Park, so hopefully the fans will come out behind us again as they did last Saturday, and we'll give them something to cheer about. Oh, well, you always know you have to work hard. Dunfermline came here on Saturday. Dunfermline and Kilmarnock in similar positions. People have got to appreciate that they're fighting hard to stay in the Premier League. And, you know, they set their stall out to make it difficult for long spells in the game. Kilmarnock worked extremely hard. The players put all our players under pressure as soon as we were receiving the ball. So um, we had to show a little bit of patience and, uh, and make sure that we kept that pressure on them all the time and eventually hoped to get the breakthrough, which was exactly how it happened. And a great hat trick from a man who early on in the game took a bit of stick from the fans. I think so. I think it's just the way he is. He's uh, a little bit awkward at times on the ball, but uh, he's a proven goal scorer. He, two seasons in a row, he was the top goal scorer in Denmark. He's a confident finisher. And, uh, if we can supply chances like Ali McCoy, he's confident that he can uh, score them. So uh, he showed that tonight. Well, Ali McCoy, he's the kind of guy who has been taking the kind of pelters that you took in the early 80s and he came good last night with a hat mild, the pelters he's taken. <laughs> no, I think to be fair to him, his, his third goal last night was exceptional. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's strike is all about confidence. His second goal, uh, he got in the road of a Trevor, Trevor shot, which uh, which is going nowhere near the goal. Which uh, <laughs> is one of these things. But I mean, it's all about strikers and confidence. And to be fair to him, he scored three goals last night. And he, if you look at his record, Jim, his record's exceptional. Mm -hmm. And I honestly believe Eric will score a lot of goals. And yep. I, I, I hope we all do. The difficulty when he arrived, Trevor, was that he was always going to be compared to Loudrop. And I think with anybody, that's unfair. Yeah, Brian is obviously exceptional. Uh, as Eric was saying there on the, on the videotape that uh, he's a goal scorer and you know sometimes we want players to be what they're not. Eric has come out and said that this is what I do and you know if he gets a chance I'm sure he's going to score some goals. You know, we've got a team that creates a lot of chances. Normally it's Ali who's putting them away but you know Eric got his opportunity last night and he did very well for us. Bill, you reckon he'll stop becoming a figure of ridicule? Well he's one of these guys who's, who, who will always give you a bit of a laugh sometimes because he does like, like when Ted McMahon was at Ibrox, unorthodox things you just don't know, and I don't know if he knows sometimes, and that's not being cruel, it's just one of these, he's, he's an instinctive finisher whose job isn't to go and win the ball and beat nine men. I mean, that's Brian Loudup's job and, and Ali's job. Yeah. <laughs> Ali, <laughs> Ali despite, despite the fact that you guys keep winning and you're 14 points clear, you still get criticised for the way you play. On Saturday, you weren't good enough, a lot of fans weren't happy. Last night, not really happy. Like, yeah, I think come back to be in. fair, the Ferlin of I mean, we did not play well on Saturday, by any manner of means, but I think to be fair, the film maybe got to take a wee bit of stick for the way they played, mm. and I hope Bert doesn't mind me saying this, but I mean, they, they came and they set their stall out and defended, and that's all they had in mind. And to be fair to them, after losing five and six goals, mm. who can argue them? But we scored three goals against them, it's, and it's all about us breaking down defences. Mm -hmm. um, last night, the same, Kilmarnock scored early on, and, and we had to break them down again, and we did, we did so. It's all about, as Trevor said, we, we, we play in a team that create chances, and it's just a matter of sticking them away. And if we do stick our, our fair percentage them away, I don't think many teams will beat us. Meanwhile, we understand tonight that there's no chance that Mark Hately will be taking over as player boss of Kilmarnock. Hately spent all day yesterday with the Killy board and seemed on the verge of signing for the Rugby Park Club. But when the two parties talked money, it became obvious that they were miles apart in the valuation of the job. Hately, though, would say nothing tonight. Mark Hately was, we hear, on the verge of going to your old club, Kilmarnock, as player boss, but it fell apart because of money. What, what do you reckon about that one? Kelly being small-minded? Very much so. I think uh, it's, a, it's a total embarrassment to Kilmarnock. Uh, first of all, that, that the fact that it's leaked out that they, they, they were talking to Mark Hately yesterday. How does Bobby Williamson feel tonight trying to prepare a side tomorrow? He knows that, uh, obviously, he's not going to get the job now. Um, and apparently, to, to make Mark Hately a derisory offer, after speaking to him for several hours, just seems to, to be a, another complete Because uh, he's, he's a big here. name, Davey, isn't he? Yeah. Big track record. Well, he, I think he would uh, bring people through the turnstiles at, at Rugby Park. Um, and he's the type of name that would stimulate the whole town. But uh, once again, I think uh, it's, it's another embarrassment here for Kilmarnock. Briefly, Davey, Billy Dodds, another two years at Pataudry. Mm. Do you think he's earned it? He certainly earned it. Uh, and good business by Roy Aiken. A lot of interest from uh, three French clubs. Um, and given that it would have been very hard to, to replace a player who's already scored 18 goals this season, then tying him up for two and a half years, a uh, shrewd piece of business, yeah. OK. Well, Kilmarnock will have to dig deep if they're to bring ex-ranger Mark Hately to Rugby Park as player manager. Killy chairman Ronnie Hamilton today refused to comment on reports that he has spoken to the former England striker as he tries to line up a big-name replacement for the sacked Alec Totten. But I understand that Hately spent the day at Rugby Park yesterday. However, sensation deal with Kilmarnock after the Rugby Park Club sacked him two weeks ago. Tonight he reveals that his next managerial move could take him overseas. He's been talking to Alison Walker. Just two weeks after his sacking from Kilmarnock, Alec Totten is in demand elsewhere. He'll make up his mind about his future in the new year. I've had a couple of us from abroad. Uh, one especially, one very good offer. And the chairman of that particular club wants me to fly across on uh, the 2nd of January. Um, it'd be very exciting. Um, if I come off and uh, so it's a case of going across here and see if things are favourable for both parties and uh, financially it's, it's very, very good. So um, we'll see what transpires. Totten refused to identify exactly where he might be going, but he's still clearly shocked about his dismissal from Rugby Park. I felt when I went in there, um, I won the fans over, I won the players over. It was the oldest team, if you like, in the Premier League. We changed it to the youngest team. Commandments were favourites for relegation. We finished the respectable seventh. Last season, um, I lost the first five games. Now, that particular time, the chairman, Bob Fleeting, could have uh, sacked me, but he didn't. He had faith in me. We finished the highest ever in the Premier League. So I think that's why that 
Every chairman and manager, I think, is the most important man at the club, really, because I felt Bob Freeman was a tremendous chairman. So when Ronnie Hamilton took over, Totten knew he was on his way out. If the chairman appoints a guy, well, I say, um, he'll be the chairman's man. I said before that you've got to have a tremendous rapport, you know, with, like, say, a chairman. Uh, if they get the things right, the two of them, they're the two most important men at the club. If they get the things right, I think the club can be very successful. Meanwhile, tonight, Friday Sports Scene understands that Mark Hately has already had talks with the club with a view to succeeding Totten. Hately is keen to return to Scotland, but a financial agreement has yet to be reached.